Sabrina 2000's comic, Issue 30. We start out with quickly telling Sabrina that her South American plant just sprouted. I wonder if Landra is from the animated series cartoon. That would explain a lot better why she keeps showing up when she's not an interesting character. I hope the story develops on her personality. Sabrina says that the flower that pops out of the ground is just the way Landra travels. Salem talks as if her being the daughter of a rainforest shaman makes her have green magic powers. Why would you get specific powers from a specific career? Wouldn't every witch have those powers? Sabrina gets excited, so of course she gets disappointed afterward. Right when I was thinking that her visiting Sabrina was too good to be true. A telephone shows up and dangles from the flower instead, and Landra is sobbing on the phone and says she can't come to Greendale because her parents aren't back yet from the shaman convention in Peru yesterday. She has every reason to be worried about them because you'd think they could just warp home anytime they want. Were they kidnapped? Is that the lame excuse for her not even getting to have one dinner at Sabrina's house? How the hell has she not had an extended visit even at this point? It's been months, hasn't it? I immediately wondered why she didn't just warp her parents to her. Couldn't she just summon a flower and warp them to her through the flower? She could just summon the flower where they are. She complains that on top of that, she can't find her pet anaconda. At least I know the exact species of her snake now, but I don't care. I don't like him anyways. I kind of feel bad for her being this upset right off the bat. It irritates me that the way the comic is, Sabrina thinks she has to ask Quigley's permission to go visit Landra and help her, instead of just warping there herself, or warping Landra's parents to her. And Salem thinks he has to go with her to protect her. And he's probably right too. And Quigley hesitates. If this was one of the good Sabrina comics, she just warped to her no big deal. She thanks Quigley for giving her permission to make her friend feel better. The girls run towards each other, but sadly we don't actually get to see them hug like was being built up to. And Salem somehow mistakes that snake for Antony when even I can immediately tell it's not him. He's a completely different shade of green and looks mad and has a weird hat. Naturally, the snake ignores him. But despite the mad look on his face, he isn't attacking them. So combine that with a hat, and I guess that's supposed to be a different sentient snake. Or regular snake that somehow stole someone's hat. Apparently, Sabrina and Landra expect me to believe that this isn't back to Antony, and Landra says that he showed up a few minutes ago but won't speak to her. If the artist had to conform to a sudden redesign of him, or decided that himself, this was the worst story to do that in. Then Landra complains that the rainforest is silent, when normally it's always full of noise from animals. I like the intriguing mystery going on. I guess it's magic related. Salem says this could be related to Antony's bizarre behavior. Can't they just point and bring him back to normal? They decide to follow the snake, and because convolution, He's already so far ahead of them that Landra has to cast a spell to illuminate the snake's trail through the jungle. Landra casually says that they've crossed over into Peru. That's the easiest illegal border crossing ever. They just have to walk through the jungle. I wonder if that's accurate. The snake's leading them to a fabled city, Cuzco, that was once the capital of the Incan Empire, and also the place where her parents were attending the shaman convention. The comic also teaches the audience that Brujo is Spanish for Witch Doctor. That's faster to say, but now I'm wondering why most of their speech is in English if they want to insist on a Spanish word for one thing. I guess they prefer it because it's got less syllables. And maybe English is officially the universal language for witches everywhere. Someone tells the people who have been detained at the temple ruins that he wants to be addressed as their rememberer. He says that their Incan ancestors had no written language, and the culture was kept alive orally by men called rememberers. So we'll use the Spanish word for witch doctor, but not the Incan word for remember. He says that he wants these people to help him restore the Incan culture. At first that sounds like a sympathetic goal, as long as human sacrifice isn't restored. Why wasn't Incan culture being preserved by these witches in the first place? These witches are hundreds of years old. It'd be more realistic for them to be old-fashioned and stubbornly cling on to older ways and ideas. Because that's how every human ages. They're gonna have at least some nostalgia. 
I'm glad this is a thing in the plot to actually take advantage of the fact that it's in South America. He claims to be the reincarnation of the Sapa Inca, the original sun god leader of the Old Ones. So, gods get reincarnated now? They're not literally immortal or able to teleport right out of the afterlife world and get a new body? I guess reincarnation is how they get one, but that'd take decades because they'd have to grow up all over again. At that point, what's the difference between an Incan god and a witch? Considering that this is a universe with witches in it already, him being right wouldn't be out of the question, but I guess it's much more likely that he's lying. Especially since his motivation isn't just to restore Incan culture. Oh no, that'd be too noble, interesting, and subversive. That result in the world of Sabrina being made more interesting, because now it's different from Earth. Instead, he just has to pile on a goal to recreate the Incan Empire, and then retake all of Western South America so that he can rule it. So he's just in it to be a dictator. Hopefully, that's the only reason he's being called nuts and told shame on you. Because I don't see why these witches want to have held on to Incan culture. Don't they live in isolation because they're in the Amazon rainforest and all know each other? They won't have to assimilate into Spanish culture, would they? Landro's house seems isolated from that. It seems too fictiony that Landro's father just has to be the one to speak for all of them and tell them that he disgraces their ancestors with his foolish notions. Even though the ancient Incans wanted an empire, wouldn't they agree with that? Why does he have to say notions instead of power hunger? Wasn't he alive in the Incan Empire? So the Rememberer snaps his finger, saying that the shamans will do everything he wants, or else. It's unique that he speaks about himself in the third person. Then, while he could have easily brainwashed the whole crowd with a snap of the finger since he's a witch, and that'd be good writing, the snapping is meaningless and one of them says to look up in the sky. Are these people witches? Am I supposed to believe that most of these shamans aren't? I'm under the assumption that this guy cast a spell so that teleportation out of this place was impossible. Even through green magic. That's the only explanation possible for why these witches didn't just warp home a long time ago. So how easily and how exactly was Salem's plan to take over the world foiled in the animated series? Depending on how easily it was, shouldn't he be defeated by now the same way? I guess the comic did prove that only witches around mortals are spied on. But shouldn't he know that the minute his army tries to bother any mortals, spy witches would see that and stop him? So he shouldn't even try. There's a panel with the giant sound effect word, Zoosh, which is hard to take seriously, and everyone in the crowd is thrown upwards a little, implying that there was a minor earthquake. Then why not have a rumble sound effect? And why not actually draw the scenery on the ground and the sky instead of just having it be white? It turns out that the Rememberer is relying on a supernatural being called the Jaguar, who looks like a human anyways and isn't even wearing black like a Jaguar to intimidate them. You'd think a bunch of witches would be able to save themselves from him. What, did he depower them all beforehand? Are most of them not witches? So Landra's parents are stubbornly not revealing their magic? Even though they can just erase people's memories to cover it up? Magic is being revealed anyways! Why is he called a Jaguar when he's not a Jaguar? That's like a supervillain or superhero name. Why is he telling them to submit to the will of the Rememberer? Why is he submitting to him when he's showing he's got powerful magic and this guy isn't doing anything? Landra's father doubts that he's the true Jaguar. He's a mythological being now? Why is he called a Jaguar when that's a name made of English words? Why is a witch doubting that he's the Jaguar when he has no reason to be skeptical of anything? So the dictator wannabe recounts this guy's origin, as if that's supposed to be proof that he's really the Jaguar. What makes him any more powerful? How would he be any more powerful than Landra's parents? Am I actually supposed to buy that they can only use green magic and that's it? As if South American witches are much less powerful because they're South American. The member explains that during an archaeological dig, famed zoologist Ralph discovered an ancient Incan temple. First off, how is he both an archaeologist and a zoologist? That'd take a lot of time on his part. How does he juggle two different full-time jobs? He must have had a lot of dedication to spend time in university getting the degrees necessary for both jobs. This makes me wonder if this isn't even meant to be based on a real-life myth, because that alone is confusing. Also, really? He discovered an ancient Incan temple? Or an archaeological dig? He alone did that? 
tons of people didn't already know about that giant structure yet. We aren't being shown a bunch of mounds of dirt around him, implying that he had to dig it up. Also, why aren't we told how long ago this was exactly? When he found the temple, he also found a red monster guarding the site, clearly from the other realm. Racing into the temple to escape, I guess because he thought it was too big to follow him and he'd hide behind its interior walls, he stumbled across a secret chamber. He couldn't have been a witch himself or it would have warped to safety, or better yet, destroyed the monster in a single point. He sees some hieroglyphics showing the same beast terrorizing the Incas. Wait, what was that about the Incan culture and not having a written language? Is this literally Egyptian hieroglyphics? Or is the comic forgetting hieroglyphics are a written language? Him making it here just fine is justified because the dragon is too busy chasing a bunch of other people to pay attention to him. He finds a belt with an inscription that he can conveniently read. This is an interesting story. It seems to be taking actual risks. So, I assume the belt was made by a witch. But why would the witch store a belt in a place like this? Is she living in this temple? Why didn't the witch in the temple have a locked door to avoid this? The belt says that he who loves the animal kingdom can wear this belt and be transformed into a human jaguar. That's an oxymoron. I can understand a witch having magical artifacts because they might feel too lazy to imagine stuff. And some spells would be too complicated to fully visualize, so a potion or something would be needed. I guess the reason the myth being recounted doesn't explain that a witch made the belt and lives in the temple is that nobody found out and lived. It's explained that after putting on the belt, Ralph acquired super strength, the ability to fly, and control over all of the creatures in the world. What does that have to do with jaguars at all? Wasn't it obvious that a jaguar-themed superhero should have jaguar powers? Why wouldn't the writer research jaguars and what special abilities they have compared to humans? Do jaguars have a great sense of smell or hearing? He could have that instead of being a pointless ripoff of Superman who has Aquaman's powers turned up to 11. I'm guessing that the jaguar is a superhero or supervillain that's from a comic outside of Sabrina that's crossing over with it. It is advertised on the cover as if we're supposed to be excited about it. Well, it kind of fits. Out of nowhere, the Remember reveals that these events had taken place in alternate reality. That was unnecessary. Using his magical powers, he's brought the Jaguar here to serve him as opposed to using those same powers himself if he's so powerful as to do that. He can teleport someone to him on a whim, but he can't do that earthquake thing himself? I guess he has him here because he's iconic. So it's the intimidation factor. It's brave of someone in the crowd to threaten to flee in the face of these two magical beings. But that makes me wonder why the crowd didn't go home earlier. If they were supposed to be home yesterday, why didn't they go home at night when these two would be asleep? If they stayed up all night staring at them to make sure they wouldn't run away, they'd be acting really tired. I don't see why this whole thing didn't happen the day before this. Right after everyone arrived at the temple. The whole reason Sabrina went to the jungle was because Landra's parents didn't come back yet. One of the crowd says, by the gods, as an interjection. They're showing respect to the Incan gods, despite being witches. The jaguars commanded all the animals of the rainforest to surround them. So again, why is he working for this dictator wannabe? I guess he wants to benefit from him taking over the world with a position of power for some reason. Why does he take over himself? Why does he think he needs to tolerate this guy? Is he too lazy to do the paperwork of running the world? No, that would be interesting, makes sense. I think he's being brainwashed. Or it was created by him. One of the animals that surrounds these people is the snake that looks completely different from Antony. And yet even Landra's mom calls him that. So it's official. So can't these witches warp home? It should be explained by one of these two that they'd just be warped back. But you'd think one of the witches here would cast a spell to freeze these two in time and tie up the dictator wannabe. It makes no sense that not one of them would do that. There's no indication that they're immune to that. I guess for intimidation purposes, he tells Jaguar to throw a wall from the temple into the sky and destroy it. He wants to bring back Incan culture, but he destroys a part of the Incan temple just for show. So why does he bother with the Incan theming at all if he doesn't actually care about it? We should be shown that he restores the wall with his magic right after this. And the fact that this happened for no good reason makes it irritating that this backfires on them by alerting Sabrina and Landra. 
Sabrina says they should take cover rather than using magic to zap up umbrellas for them all or something. Salem looks at one of the rocks and says that since it has sharp, shiny edges, the rock is newly busted. And he somehow recreates its former shape when he has no way of knowing it. I guess his magic just accesses people's brainwaves to do this for him. Somehow he finds out that the rock is from a brick from the old Incan temple. And Landra instantly recognizes it as from that specific temple, which is very smart of her considering that usually that information would be completely useless to her, so she'd have no reason to remember it. Sure, she lives somewhere near the temple, but she doesn't live in it. She'd have no reason to visit it herself. I guess she learned about it really recently. This didn't even need to happen. They're just following the snake's trail. They would have found the temple anyways. Landra says that she recognizes these people and their shamans and soothsayers that her parents know. I thought soothsayer was supposed to be an insult to mean fake psychic. But she's not saying this as an insult at a time like this, is she? So why aren't any members of the crowd casting an immobility spell on those two villains if all of them are witches? Sabrina asks what they should do, and then the snake from earlier shows up. Landra says she's so glad to see him, but it stops being heartwarming when he wraps them up in his tail. I actually like him a lot better when he's merely hissing instead of having that stupid dialogue, though. You'd think that a snake wouldn't be so fast. You'd think Sabrina would have cast a spell to keep the snake frozen in time, like she did to her teacher no problem, instead of stating the obvious that he's mad so that he'd have the time to wrap around them. Why didn't he do this to them the last time he must have noticed them? For once, it makes sense that Salem has to be the one to save them because his hands were free while theirs weren't. Salem casts a spell to smack his head telekinetically, and they run away as I wonder why Sabrina doesn't just freeze him in time like her teacher. And that would be extremely overpowered in combat. So when she runs into the Jaguar, and he says they're not going anywhere, the story's writing turns into complete garbage, because she doesn't just freeze him in time with one spell, with no explanation. So now I'm pissed off because of the forced tension whippifying all of the heroes to glorify this character, who's always super serious so his personality isn't remotely likable. Salem says that he recognizes him from his old Archie superhero comics. I didn't know Archie of all comics had superhero comics. I thought that was one of the comic publishers that didn't, and Archie and Betty was his bread and butter. And that was what made it unique. Nope. It doesn't even have that to be proud of. Lame. They just have to cash in on the superhero trend with their own ideas to get money. Of course, they've done superhero stuff before him. I remember Captain Sprocket from Archie's Madhouse. Harvey says his paper route's a great way to make some cash. Predictably, something goes wrong right away. He throws it too hard and says it's about to smash through their window. He's an idiot if he thinks that's possible. And if the writer does, he hasn't done the research. The angry video game nerd repeatedly threw a newspaper at a window he detached from his house in his paperboy review, and it took forever for him to even crack it. Salem casts a spell to make the newspaper fly around, slowing down its momentum instead of simply freezing it and making it fall right there. I guess that'd be harder since he's already focused on the fact that it was moving. Harvey ends up quitting the job already because he thinks he was responsible for the paper flying that way. He thinks he made a great curveball, and when the Pro Scouts see his curveball, he'll get a $5 million signing bonus. This is kind of amusing, but only in a black comedy sort of way. It's more tragic because he's quitting his job over nothing. Yep, the story sucks from now on, because this panel doesn't have Sabrina freezing him in time either. They could at least have a cool magic duel fight. Instead, they waste time saying that he can't possibly be the real Jaguar, even though they're witches, so they've seen plenty of strange things, and he could easily spend this time doing something against them. But somehow he doesn't. Landra says that if this were the real mythological Jaguar, he wouldn't be evil. Salem wastes time telling them to stand back, instead of just using his magic to handle him instantly. This is lame! How are these characters so stupid? Salem's brainwashed because he's technically an animal, even though he could have easily frozen Jaguar in time by now. Sabrina and Landra just stand there and look horrified, instead of pointing and trapping Jaguar in ice. Finally, Sabrina uses magic, but she just summons a shield spell for him to run into. Landra has some binds tie him up, because I guess they don't know he has super strength, which should let him break out in seconds. What's wrong with them? Just attack him! Just because they're girls doesn't mean they'd always be opposed to attacking bad guys. 
and they somehow think it's a good idea to run away right now instead of pointing at him to freeze him in time or turn him into paper mache or anything else that can't move. Sabrina says the animals everywhere are closing in on them. Most of the animals are on the ground. Why aren't these girls magically flying? Landra brings her into the root realm with Sabrina complimenting her idea. Landra senses where her parents' feet are touching the ground, ripping off Toph. But how does she know it's their feet in particular? Can she sense their exact DNA and aura too? And why doesn't she teach Sabrina green magic? There's a tremor because Jaguar broke free of the vines. Go figure. What took him so long? He flies to the temple and the girls reunite with Landra's parents and Landra hugs her mom while Sabrina holds hands with her father even though they aren't related. I guess Sabrina's too respectful of her parents' memory to just magically create new versions of her parents. Because she could have done that in any iteration of the franchise, actually. He says he's glad they're here, and she thanks him. Sabrina says they need to get out of here and find help. They're omnipotent, so they wouldn't need help. Why isn't she warping them home? Why isn't Landra getting them home right away with her flower magic? He removes the moth from his medicine pouch, which reveals their location, and it turns out Landra's parents have been brainwashed into wanting people to obey their member. But they still love Landra and Sabrina. So this is actually a much better portrayal of brainwashing than RG Sonic and Sadie M do with roboticization. It's much more believable and interesting that they still have their personalities, and the only difference is that one thing has changed. It's much easier to make only one change to the brain. I guess the remember was really confident somehow that the whole crowd would want to work for him willingly if he didn't brainwash the whole crowd right away. What was the point of him trying to intimidate them with Jaguar if he was just going to brainwash them anyways? Couldn't he have used his powers himself? Jaguar picks up and flies with Landra, and predictably, these two end up kidnapped by Jaguar, even though there's no reason things would end up like this when Sabrina's so powerful. Freeze the bad guys in time, you morons. Sabrina says it'd be against the law to keep them in a jail here. Sapanka tells Jaguar to post one of his animal guards at the entrance. These girls are witches. There should be no chance whatsoever that they'll stay here. There's no reason he would think that. If he was smart, he would have killed them right away. I have to assume at this point that Jaguar himself is immune to magic being directly used on him. But that needs to be explained or it's going to be a giant plot hole. Salem warps over to them and explains that he just faked being brainwashed. Which makes more sense because he's a human in a cat's body. Things could have gone either way there, so this was a nice surprise. He turned invisible and tracked the girls here. Landra says, nicely done, but logically they shouldn't need his help. It's not like Jaguar depowered them. Wait, their guard was a freaking llama? What about all of the other intimidating animals? They're sacrificing logic for the sake of a joke in a story that's mostly trying to take itself seriously. Salem turns him and the girls into intangible, inaudible phantoms. They go eavesdrop on the Rememberer, and we get the Captain Obvious twist that he's just a warlock who specializes in mind control. Of course, the comic didn't have the guts to take the risk of actually confirming the existence of something as interesting as Mesoamerican gods, when it's a comic with witches in it. So yeah, it was far more likely that he was a witch. But it didn't actually have to be that way. But it would make me wonder why it took so long to happen if he really was Sapinka or whatever. Salem specifically told Sabrina that archetypes from mortal folklore actually live in the other realm. It's like the stories were based on them in the first place, or ghosts written by them. So at that point, couldn't Incan gods be real in Sabrina's universe too? He says that he brought Jaguar here from his alternate reality. How did he find out about that reality? A portal gun? At least the 90s comic Sonic crossover tried to explain why Enchantra knew about Sonic's world. Even Worlds Collide tried to do that. Did he try to warp inside of Jaguar's comic book? And create a pocket dimension to walk around in to make that possible? How did he warp to an entire other reality if he didn't know it existed and what it looked like? Maybe that kind of thing happens a lot, actually. Salem tells Sabrina and Landra to follow his lead. Salem tells the girls to stay locked like this. He'll channel their powers and add them to his. Since when do witches need to do this to combine their powers? Salem taunts Jaguar, asking if his clothes get itchy, and he blasts him with a spell to knock the mind control spell out of his head with their combined powers. Why do they need Salem's help? The Rememberer took control of this guy by himself. 
I guess they put a lock on the mind control spell so one person couldn't undo it, but locks would be really worthless if any witch could just gather two other witches and cast the antidote spell. Couldn't the bad guy have brainwashed the entire crowd of witches into combining their powers and casting a brainwashing spell on Jaguar that could never be undone? Jaguar breaks the wall of the Remember, and I have to wonder why he doesn't just point at him to mind control him again before he can be beaten up. Why can't we see him be beaten up? Instead, that's not written to the story when you'd think that a superhero comic would be all about action scenes. And Jaguar says that he's gonna follow his orders or else he'd be turned over to the animals. And he has his hand tightly on his shoulder. So? The animals are across the table from him. Can't he just point and mind control him all over again? Can't Sabrina break the spell on all the shamans? Why is he agreeing to remove his mind control over the shamans instead of just freezing all of these people in time, killing most of them, and brainwashing Jaguar again? I guess I'm supposed to believe the whole time that he's too startled and scared of Jaguar's wrath to think straight and imagine anything. Seriously? He has way more powers than Jaguar. He could give himself super strength if he wants to. Landro's father thanks Jaguar. It's heartwarming to see Jaguar smile for once. He says he couldn't have done it without these three, and tells Remember to send him home with no tricks or else he'll be back. Not if one of his tricks is sending him home into a volcano where he'd fall into lava and die. Landra has to go visit Sabrina as a reward, and she says her house is a great place. Already I'm annoyed by her snake again. What kind of snake would have a goofy smile like that? This issue is by Mike Gallagher. Still complete nonsense when it comes to the writing, by completely forgetting that these characters are all witches. Sabrina has to go save Landra's parents because they didn't come home yet after yesterday. Even though they could just teleport, or go through the root realm at will. There's a high stakes plot because Landra's parents are kidnapped, and a warlock wanted to take over the Americas. And the Incan theme is more creative than just having another guy wanting to take over the whole world. It's a fantasy plot. Not one where Sabrina, well, Sabrina might as well have been mortal anyways, until she combined her powers with Salem. The minute we got to Jaguar's backstory, the issue stood out. While I hated that Sabrina didn't just freeze Jaguar like her teacher right away, or at least fought him with magic, so that seriously hurt my respect for the story. It could have had Sabrina freeze Jaguar without anything really changing. Because they broke out of jail so fast that they never needed to be sent there because they could have just kept heading for the temple and bound out their member's plan. Sure it was convenient for them that he was talking about his plan himself out loud when he already knew it. All of those shamans should have just warped home with their magic regardless. It's not like they were instantly brainwashed en masse. Clearly the plot needed a lot of rewrites in a few areas to not seem forced when they're all witches. As for Jaguar himself, I wasn't too impressed. Sure, him smashing a wall he threw looked cool, but his only personality is boring, serious guy, while Captain Sprocket at least tries to have fun and be a parody. He steals all his powers from Superman, but oh, he can control animals too. Why have a character like Jaguar have a bunch of random non-sequitur powers and not a single power that's actually associated with the Jaguars? That's just silly. He's not even dressed in black, so he could have been named anything. 